Hi, so today for the respiratory case, I've got a, um, a case on a 19 year old boy um, who has suffered from a chronic cough. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to go through the history and the examination findings and then derive a um, management plan and also um, a possible diagnosis for this case. So the first thing I like to do when I do any of these cases um, in, a, in exam conditions is that I like to um, underline the key points. Um, so for example, in this instance, we've, we'll just go through the case and I'll underline um, what I believe is the key points and I'll explain why. So um, a 19 year old boy has a history of repeated chest infections. Because he has repeated chest infections, the age is quite significant. So um, I'm gonna underline that uh, again. Uh, the repeated chest infections that's something that should um, th that should stick out instantly because um, as we know in medicine any pathology that or any um, symptom that is quite recurrent has an underlying cause um, so in this case in this case study uh, this repeated chest infection is going to be um, the door opener for whatever uh, diagnosis that we draw from. So um, he had problems with the cough and sputum production in the first two years of his life. So cough and sputum uh, at the age of two. So um, for two years when he was born he produced a lot of sputum and he was also coughing and he was labelled as being bronchiectic. Okay so over the next 14 years he was often chesty so again that's quite significant. Oh, I'm getting a cough now as well and had spent four to five weeks a year away from school so again that's something that's quite significant so he must have been quite poorly which is why he had to spend time away from school over the past two years he has developed more problems and is and was admitted to hospital on three occasions so again um, three occasions with cough and sputum so that's something that's quite significant again um, a 19 year old being admitted to hospital for three uh, for coughing and bringing up sputum uh, in two, for three times in two years. Again, that's very significant. I mean, if it was somebody that was, um, you know, in their 50s or um, in their late 40s, 60s, maybe not as significant, but in this case, because he's only 19, that's quite, um, that, sh that should stick out and that should um, hopefully tell us a little bit more about his history and his condition. So on the first two occasions, Haemophilius influenza was grown on culture. Again, haemophilia influenza, that's quite significant. Um, that will tell us more about his conditions. And on the last two occasions, two and on the last occasion, two months previously, pseudomonas was isolated. So first it was H influenza and then it was pseudomonas. Um Okay, he's still coughing up sputum, so that's still continuous. Although he has largely recovered from the infection, we don't really know what treatment he's receiving, so that maybe could be just down to treatment that he's getting from um, after his admission. So his mother is worried and asked for a few further sputum samples to be sent off. The report has come back from the microbiology lab showing that there is a scanty growth of pseudomonas. So he has been discharged from hospital. He is undergoing treatment of some sort sputum um has improved but he's positive for pseudomonas so that's going to be significant so there is no family history so again that's significant of any chest disease routine questioning shows that his appetite is reasonable maturation is normal and his bowels tend to be irregular okay right so on examinations, so on examination he's thin, weighing 48 kg and he's 1.6 meters. So um, he has a low BMI, uh, so he's underweight basically. Sorry for my handwriting. The only finding in the chest is a few inspiratory crackles over the upper zone. So again that's significant of both lungs, so he has bilateral crackles uh, in the upper lobes. Cardiovascular and abdo examination is normal so we can rule out cardio and gastro um, pathologies for now. Okay so what does the x-ray show? That's the first question. So this is the x-ray. So in this x-ray we can see that there is um, 
some form or another of shadowing in the upper lobe upper lobes um and that could be that could just you know point towards bronchiectasis that could be a pathology that could be a diagnosis a potential one um if we look at the pulmonary arteries uh they're quite prominent so that could maybe suggest pulmonary hypertension um anything else that i can see we can see shadowing dis distribution in the upper lobes um which I think is the most significant thing. Uh, we would need a CT of the lungs if we were to diagnose bronchi bronchiectasis. And again, a CT would be able to tell us um, what stage he is at and what he's undergoing uh, and what treatment we can provide. So in terms of the x-ray, we can see upper upper bibasal, um, upper low bibasal shadowing of both lungs, um, prominent pulmonary arteries may be suggestive of pulmonary hypertension, um, but the shadowing is, it, that's the key here, um, that's not something that you would see typical of a 19 year old, so he must have had quite a lot of lung damage um, over his 19 years of um, 19 years of life if you like so he's had a lot of lung damage and that's something that is um, irreversible so we have to think about pathology that starts from quite a young age so maybe from birth and up until now and um, that pathology has caused that lung damage so what is the most likely diagnosis right so because of the shadowing in the upper region uh, and also his history, this 19 years history of a 19 year old boy uh, makes me think that the most appropriate diagnosis would be cystic fibrosis. Um, his repeated chest infections um, and his cough and sputum production since birth basically um, gives me the idea that it's definitely, well, 95% cystic fibrosis, um, possibly late onset, always there, but it's quite mild cystic fibrosis, which is why he's probably not been diagnosed earlier. Um, another thing that's quite, uh, that's quite significant in this case study is that, um, his, when his sputum was tested, uh, it was tested for, it was positive for haemophilus, uh, influenza and pseudomonas and from, um, I mean just from what I've read online, I've, I know that H influenza and staph is usually initially very predominant, um, is a predominant organism in the sputum. Uh, for CF patients and then later on when the lung damage has happened um, it, it's pseudomonas which will be quite common so first we have H influenza and we have also staph which we don't have in this situation but that's completely fine so we have H influenza staph and then later on once the lung damage progresses um, if he has to sputum him again it should be positive for pseudomonas which is what it is in this occasion um by pseudomonas i mean pseudomonas aeruginiosa but i just can't say that word so i just say pseudomonas um so and also as we said before uh, cystic fibrosis is considered when um, a patient has a repeated history of chest infections in terms of diagnosing him, um, generally diagnosing cystic fibrosis um, would be to measure electrolytes in the sweat. So we would test for sodium and chloride. Um, if there was a high concentration of sodium and chloride, then that would not, you know, that would that would be quite a strong basis for a patient having cystic fibrosis. But at nineteen, um, the sweat test probably isn't reliable more reliable in a child um i mean a funny fact is that actually we had a cystic fibrosis professor once 
do a lecture on us and um mentioned that in the olden days well not that old not that long ago but about 20 30 years ago what they would do when a child came in with these symptoms so with cough and sputum produ- with excessive sputum production um they would lick the pa- they would lick the baby's skin and if it tasted salty then that would you know be suggestive of cystic fibrosis <coughs> but in this instance he's 19 doing a sweat has wouldn't really be reliable uh, but what we can do is that um, we know that cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive inheritance disease so we can test for the um, we can test for the gene uh, that is present in cystic fibrosis and the gene is I'm not sure what the triangle is for but it's F508 um, so that's the gene that is um, present uh, in patients that have cystic fibrosis with a genetic. Cause so, so if they've had, so most likely it's because the parents, both parents, are carriers. So this boy um, has picked up this gene, and it's dominant in this case, which is why he has the symptoms and he has the conditions. Um, in terms of treatment, it doesn't really say to discuss treatment, but if we just very quickly go over treatment, treatment would be um, a lung transplant in the long term because that damage is going to continue. Uh, it's going to be, it's irreversible. There's no going back. So a lung transplant in the long term would be an option. Uh, and a gene replacement therapy uh, could also maybe be considered. So that's it.